Welcome to the Supply Chain Talks podcast. My name is Sophie Fillon Enk. In season two of this podcast, we will dive into the world of sustainable container supply chains. As decision makers, cargo owners, and freight forwarders play a key role in boosting sustainability in the logistics chain. But how do you build a CO2 neutral and at the same time resilient supply chain? And what are the possibilities and standout examples that exist today? The concept reduce, replace, rethink can be used as a strategy to decarbonize your supply chain. Each episode, I will discuss one of these three concepts with container industry experts. I'm ready to explore the possibilities, so join me on this journey and we will learn something together. This episode, I'll be diving into the concept of reduce with APM terminals and port base, the port community system for the Dutch ports. Together with Donald Bahn and Mara Vron, I will explore how you can reduce waste in your supply chain through digitization and end-to-end -end visibility. Welcome to this episode, Mara and Donald. Thank Good you. to see you. Um, Donald, maybe you can start by introducing yourself and tell, tell us what it is that you do at PortBase. Sure. Uh, at PortBase, I work uh, at the uh, Business Development, Marketing and Sales uh, Department. So uh, we try to figure out uh, new possible digital solutions for our community and also try to make sure that everybody uses it in the correct way. Mm -hmm. And I have a previous history at the Port Authority, but also at the Container Shipping Line. Okay, so you're Rotterdam through and through. That's it, yeah, <laughs> exactly. And why are you so passionate about digitizing uh, the port? Well, I think uh, uh, digitizing the port uh, is uh, all about uh, uh, figuring new ways of working together. Mm -hmm. right? I really love uh, to, uh, to tackle huge problems, but not uh, single-handedly, but it has to be a joint effort and the cooperation uh, in the community is really what uh, thrives me to Absolutely. do my best. Oh, great. Uh, well, then I'm glad that we're all talking together because indeed we cannot uh, establish these big changes on our own. Uh, Mara, I'm sure you agree. Can you maybe introduce yourself and, and tell us a little bit more about APM terminals? Yes, of course. Um, so uh, I am the head of commerce for APM terminals Mass Lock 2 here in, uh, in Rotterdam. have been uh, working there since uh, 10 years. And um, for us, it's all about collaboration uh, with the different supply chain partners to ensure that together we can have a smooth connection between uh, the world and uh, the European hinterland. Yeah, absolutely. And then uh, APM, uh, so you work here in Rotterdam, but you have, there's APMs all over the world, right? Yes, correct. So we have 64 terminals uh, spread around uh, the globe uh, at all different types of uh, locations. Uh, here in Rotterdam, it's really a strategic location uh, into the European hinterland. Um, well, it's really great to have you here. A lot of experience at the table. So let's dive right in. Um, Mara, you already mentioned uh, the hinterland. What, what role uh, does um, uh, um, uh, APM play in, in terms of the shippers and the forwarders towards this hinterland? Yeah, so um, as APM Terminals, it is really our ambition, so our dream to improve lives uh, by integrating the world. And in that uh, part, we are a very, uh, yeah, we are a key player. Mm. Um, how do we do that? Um, we want to be the most modern gateway into Europe uh, by delivering a fast, safe uh, and reliable connection for all the hinterland parties that we have here. Mm -hmm. Um, and that also in an innovative and a sustainable uh, way. Right. So cargo arrives here in, in Rotterdam and it, 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 it lands at your terminal. And then what happens? How, how do you do that? Yeah, so for APM terminals, Mass Lock to 2, we have an, uh, an automated setup. Uh, in that automated setup, it is very important that uh, we get the right information at the right time. Uh, towards the hinterland, we uh, are partnering with PortBase uh, to uh, to get that information uh, in in time. So yeah. uh, specifically on our side, we have barge operators, rail operators, and uh, truck operators that are of uh, of, of huge importance. Mm -hmm. uh, we get big vessels alongside, discharging and loading a huge amount of uh, of containers uh, at the same time. So, for example, last week. We uh, discharged uh, the Manila Maersk with uh, 10,151 uh, moves. Then it's really important that those containers get to flow out of the terminal in a seamless, uh, seamless way. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so we need to know where do the containers go? Where can we position them right in the yard to avoid congestion? Um, and that information is what we get via port base. So yeah. therefore, uh, a crucial uh, partner for us. So how does that work? So you're talking about this very specific vessel last week. When when does the when does port base come into play? When when there's a, a big ship coming in like that? How does that go? Uh, so, uh, for example, that's a nice example, right? The ship coming in, so uh, the vessel arrival and the notification that the vessel will arrive to Rotterdam in this case is handled via port base. So the shipping line, they notify the arrival to the harbor master, but also notify the arrival of the cargo to the customs. Uh, so everybody is aware that the cargo and the ship are coming to Rotterdam. Mm -hmm. And uh, we exchange that information, but also make sure that uh, updates on that information are provided to companies further along in the supply chain. And all that information is freely available. That's not classified or everybody's willing to share all of that. Well, it's not freely, it's not public data because it's also sensitive data. Could mm. be commercially sensitive, but also from a risk perspective, sensitive data. So we have, uh, not everybody is, uh, is publicly allowed to use the data. You have to be a member uh, of a port base and you are screened as a company as a user before you can actually access the data that you're authorized to mm -hmm. okay right so then uh, you start exchanging this data so that you can and can ship this uh that you can deal with this cargo as as quickly and as swiftly as as possible yeah yes correct so mm -hmm. for example we no, before the container is discharged, how it is going to go uh, out of the terminal. And then in our yard, the location where we store the containers, we already store the containers that need to go on the train in the train stacks that are close to the, uh, the real terminal. Mm -hmm. Same accounts for barge and the same accounts for uh, for truck. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a very vivid image this way. So that's 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 cool. Um, Port base has been operating uh, for for twenty years, um, digitizing the port's logistics. So DNA, it, 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 I mean, digital is in your DNA. Yeah. But it's not status quo. It's continuously developing. It is, and probably it's best linked with your personal life, right? Uh, Twenty years ago, uh, mobile phone was nothing, uh, was nowhere to be found, and step by step, uh, more processes or information gets available digital right so what we saw 20 years ago is there's a lot of paper flow paper documents and uh, stamps on the papers uh, before the uh, cargo was able to move through mm. and now we have uh, together with the community digitized the core processes or the paper flows yeah in uh, in the port uh, so we made a huge step there uh, but I think uh, it's a continuous imp uh, improvement on this uh, way because not only in the port, but also further along in the supply chain all the way towards the hinterland, uh, we help to digitize processes and make sure that the data can flow. Yeah, because uh, just replacing uh, paper with data, of course, has been, I mean, a huge step in efficiency, but where it's really uh, going to prove to be an extra added value, and I think you're already experiencing that, is when you start using the data to actually work for you, and then it becomes way more than just a replacement of paper. Exactly. Yeah, we saw the first step was from paper to digital and now from digital to optimal so you want to really use the data uh, to optimize the processes yeah and this is the phase we are getting into now yeah how do you experience that mara yeah so it's the uh the the data of course itself that is more easily uh shared and and that makes the collaboration between partners a lot easier um besides that the, the data also generates like a data set, which is very useful for improving uh, certain processes. And of course, we're talking about digital also through the lens of uh, sustainability. Um, and this is also where it gets real interesting because you can really make big steps in reducing uh, the footprint of your, your customers, but also your own footprint. Can you say that you're seeing development there as well? Um, yes, so uh, for example, in, in that regard, I, I think it's good to link it also to the time that the container is at the terminal. Um, so uh, previously, it took quite a while before it, it was even known within the rest of the supply chain that the container arrived at the terminal. Also by this uh, digitization and by sharing that data, the container can depart from the terminal earlier and therefore the whole lead time in the end will uh yeah will be less yeah 
Yeah. So that really, and how how does that link to sustainability? So by uh, by having the uh, a shorter lead time for the whole process, uh, you can reuse the whole um, equipment again in a faster way. So you need less in the end. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Um, I uh, I even read that um, APN Terminals made a commitment to be fully net zero by 2040. Um, with these types of developments, I'm sure that it's, it's helpful. Um, but how, how are you looking at uh, reaching that goal? Definitely, yeah. So uh, it's a very ambitious, uh, ambitious target. Um, all on all levels within the company, uh, you see that this is really what it is about, right? Mm -hmm. um, we have the ambition to reduce to 70, uh, with 70% 70 uh, to 2030. And then, uh, yeah, like you said, uh, Sophie, to be completely neutral uh, by 2040. Um, if I look here at, uh, at Maslok the 2, uh, we started this terminal 10 years ago. We developed it 15 years ago. And uh, yeah, back then we already had this goal in mind. Mm -hmm. Uh, so here on the Maaslokte, we were able to develop it already with that in the back of our minds, mm -hmm. uh, which means that at this moment we have uh, we have a facility which is uh, fully uh, running on electric uh, equipment. At this moment here in Rotterdam, we are already uh, net zero. So yeah. the CO2 emission per TEU is like uh, 0 0.0001 or something. Uh, so the investments that we do here in Rotterdam are um, are quite small compared to the rest of the world. So, for example, we are investing in uh, six new electric terminal trucks. Uh, if you look at the different parts in the world, we are looking at investments that are much, much bigger. Uh, it's the cranes that we need to electrify. It's uh, when we're building new facilities, it's already in the concept as of the beginning. So that makes it a bit easier. Yeah, but you also have a lot of legacy equipment probably exactly. that still operates yeah. in the old way. And there's not uh, a port base everywhere. That probably Correct. also makes a difference. Correct, yeah. 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 Are you looking so, at uh, branching out, uh, Dono? <laughs> um, no, although we get a lot of requests but uh, I think uh, the, the, the key success factor for Port Base uh, was that we developed it for, uh, together with and by the community. Mm. So it's a complete integration, uh, integrated approach together with the community because we saw also learned from previous experience that it's not so much about the technology, but it's much more about the, uh, the willingness to cooperate and the understanding of each other's challenges and uh, the added value of cooperation. Mm -hmm. And that uh, I think more than 50% of our time, the last 20 years was spent on talking with the community, discussing the, the processes, really defining how this should work and figuring out the, the solution together. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that cannot be underestimated uh, how much uh, value that has. And also you see in other ports that for port base is very difficult in other, uh, well, ports where we don't know the people, we don't speak the language, we don't know the culture, uh, before you can actually be successful as a Dutch company in those kind of settings, we rather focus on the Dutch ports and make sure that we get stronger and stronger. And Maybe share your experience so exactly, other this is it, yeah. port bases can Im just uh, emerge yeah. uh, in their own uh, countries. Yeah, and especially since you're sharing this sometimes very sensitive data, as you said, uh, trust is a very important basis. That's the foundation, it really. Is. Yeah. yeah, it's the key element of, mm -hmm. uh, well, if you want to share uh, data together, you have to trust each other. And uh, trust is good by sitting together, but it's also good that you can really secure the trust also on a technology level. Mm -hmm. So that's why we have a very strict, and that's what they call identity and access management. We really know who is on the platform and who has what rights to the data, and we monitor it very strictly. Uh, but we also enable the data owners on our platform to uh, well, have a say in who they want to share it with. So they have control over their own data. Yeah. And that's a very important uh, element of our success. Yeah. Um, how does that work uh, f for you at APM? Because I think shippers and freight forwarders, they, they sort of t uh, let you handle their cargo. Uh, but what happens exactly is a little bit of a black box for them, maybe. How do you provide insight for them as to how you operate and how you use that data, for instance? And 
Um, yeah, so for us, uh, we have a, a web portal in which this is uh, uh, visible. So at any given time, you can actually check uh, what what happens uh, to Where's the my container. stuff? Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, where's my stuff? Exactly. Where is the vessel that it is on? Uh, has it already been discharged? Is often uh, the, the, the most important question. Uh, a vessel is in the port for, for quite a long time, depending on uh, how many containers it's loading or discharging. So is it discharged on hour one or on hour 48? Mm -hmm. The difference is like two days. So Right. And you try to make that as quickly and as most, as, as efficient as possible. Exactly. But, yeah. Exactly. To, to enable also a smooth process uh, throughout the terminal and throughout the supply chain. Um, so efficiency and sustainability, as you so eloquently explained, really go hand in hand, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Um, and, and digitization is kind of the accelerator for that, because that's that's the way you enable um, these things going hand in hand. Uh, how, how do you how do you help shippers and forwarders in, in, in doing this? So, well, way back when we started was really about um, data around the vessel and the customs and the harbor master, really core port processes, but that generated so much data also about the cargo and the vessel arrival, what Mara mentions, that uh, there was a lot of demand for that data further along in the supply chain at shippers and forwarders. So together with the community, we developed certain services that facilitated track and trace information from all uh, port uh, operators and the shipping lines. Mm -hmm. Our service for the import cargo is called Cargo Controller, which bundles actually all kinds of information about the cargo, shipment details and status updates uh, for the shippers who have cargo via Port of Rotterdam. Mm -hmm. So, for example, APMT and Maas Vlakte 2, they also share their data via this cargo controller service to a lot of importers and, uh, and forwarding companies. And that's, um, that's a really good service for them because it combines all kinds of data that they need to follow their cargo, not only from the terminal, but also from the shipping line and from hinterland operators. So they have one service where they can find all their data that they need. All right, so this uh, track and trace information is quite uh, comprehensive already. And we are um, uh, together with the hinterland community exploring to add their data as well. So we can really reach to the hinterland. And one of the, we'll say, key uh, requests we get uh, the last, uh, we'll say, half a year, year is more insights in uh, footprint and CO2 uh, footprint uh, insights along the supply chain. The emissions. The emissions, actually. Yeah. So, uh, and we are quite good positioned to provide at least basic set of data to calculate the emissions. Uh, so this is what, together with the community, we are exploring to, uh, to provide uh, well, a, a general insight per supply chain. Do you recognize that? Do you get questions about emissions? Like what happens exactly when unloading the vessel? Yes, definitely. Yeah. So um, uh, with, within the, the, the wider uh, company, and in our case, then uh, Maersk is, of course, our sister company, uh, we see a, a lot of customers that are more and more interested in, in that part and in their emission. And uh, there is a specific product uh, launched as well, uh, who is even, yeah, which is even uh, more, uh, um, yeah, more, uh, yeah, emission has less emission than uh, than the regular uh, product. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that product is done with uh, specific uh, vessels that uh, sail on methanol. Mm -hmm. um, 21st of September last year, we had the uh, mm -hmm. the honor to receive the Laura Maersk. Uh, that was the first vessel that was that came out of the yard uh, as a, with uh, running on uh, methanol. So. Um, there is a there is a lot of uh, focus on it yeah. in the wider supply chain. And do yeah. you see that people are willing to to pay more for that, or is it just they want to know where this is at, or how does that no, work? No, you see that uh, that that comes more and more that there's also a willingness to pay for it, and it's also linked to to all of us as mm -hmm. consumers. Mm -hmm. uh, do we want to pay more for that part? And uh, I think in in, uh, in within different stores, you already get the opportunity to pay a little more for less uh, less CO two emissions. So yeah. the de demand is uh, is growing. Yeah. Do you see that? Because you talk to all kinds of all the yeah. members of Port Base. No, we definitely see that, and that, that's also the the interesting expansion now of the communities that other types of companies they they come to the community and they request data 
mm. uh, to provide uh, yeah. insight. Uh, but also legislation uh, is a very important uh, push uh, for more sustainability. So uh, the, the emission reporting uh, uh, legislation, which is now, I think, uh, as from the 1st of January in place, it really gives a push to the demand to get insight in where are my uh, emissions. Yeah, those two things kind of go hand in hand, the, the, the policy makers, but also the demand uh, of consumers uh, are a big push and stimulus for, for, for being more aware of the, of the emissions. Um, cargo goes beyond the port, uh, reaching destinations deep into the, the hinterland, of course. Um, does the visibility that the port space provide a stop, stop once the goods are picked up uh, at the port? No, you go beyond that point. Well, or at the moment, it stops at the port. And when it leaves the port, yeah. and this is where we saw the demand also from uh, companies way in the hinterland, to get more information about the whereabouts of their goods further along in the supply chain. Um, but there are so many companies there that we uh, are looking to uh, to connect with regional partners. Mm -hmm. So there's also smaller port community systems in the European hinterland where we make a connection with. So um, they can share their data with us. We can share the data that's available here with them. Um, uh, so we don't have to build and connect everybody, but we use partners to get access to the market. Um, Mara, why is it important for you to, to share the data? Why does APM believe in it so strongly? Um, so it, it's important to enable a smooth process, mm -hmm. uh, to enable a, a smooth process from beginning uh, un until the end, until the goods are really at their final, final destination. If we do not share that data, the, the process also stops at a certain point or is delayed. Um, so also to, to keep the process ongoing, we saw that as well uh, during COVID times, right? When uh, goods were simply not picked up. That was not because of not sharing data. But you see that if, if there is a disturbance in, uh, in the, the whole uh, supply chain, the goods are not picked up anymore. Um, if that that continues to uh, go well, and I think especially sharing this data helps with this and helps to get it to get it out in time, to get it smooth. To so the the more data you can share and the more it is used by all supply chain partners, the faster the whole process will go. Which data then do you share? Because some of it is sensitive. We already talked about that a little bit. Uh, and what's the added value of the data that you share? Yeah, so I think two two things, right? So yes, some of the data is sensitive, but um, it is not sensitive for the party that uh, that that owns the cargo or that is directly involved in that uh, in that chain. Mm -hmm. So also that type of data you do want to share, but you want to share with the right party. As Donald also said, the, um, the 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 process of checking which party is behind the screen and and is pulling the data is very important. We want to share the data, but with the right party. Yeah, exactly. Because there's so many stakeholders. It just yeah. in one, um, yeah, shipment. Yeah, I think on average uh, there was uh, calculations that about 28 companies are involved in the supply chain. Uh, on an average uh, supply chain from the Far East. 28. Yeah, so 28. They touch somehow the cargo or have um, uh, business with the cargo, either in documentation or in other kinds of facilities. And uh, it's all in different digital maturity levels. Yeah. So it could be that the one still uses the stamp while the other is fully automated. Mm. And uh, a, a port community system also sometimes plays a role to connect, to be a translator or a connector to uh, well, also facilitate the really small companies, but also the really big companies so that they digitally can talk together mm. and work together. Yeah. And then what's the added value of that? So the added value is that uh, the, the data that everybody needs to optimize their planning is shared uh, very efficiently throughout the supply chain. Uh, via one standardized platform. So the, the reach of the data is far, more, uh, far bigger. So you reach a lot of companies and that allows you to, well, say, optimize your processes quickly. Mm -hmm. Instead of every company for itself, start to digitize, talk a different digital language and try to connect everybody. It's a, it's a, that's a suboptimal approach. Mm -hmm. So to, here in Rotterdam, we say, well, let's bundle those generic processes into one company. They digitize it and they connect everybody 
uh, to it. So with one connection to Portbase, you are currently connected to about 5,000 companies in the supply chain. Wow, yeah. And then, of course, that's that's your job as, as Rotterdam. You want to sort of facilitate everyone. Do you set uh, uh, conditions for for um, companies whose cargo you're, you're transporting? Like, well, you have to commit to this digital maturity level or you have to provide us at least with this level of information otherwise we can't handle your shipment yes definitely yeah um, and that's yeah when we when we started the terminal up uh, 10 years ago we already said for all internet parties it is mandatory to work via port base mm. uh, so uh, as Donald said they are the translator for us all of our information that needs to go in the hinterland goes to port base and port base ensure that it's spread throughout all the hinterland parties who who are in need of this data and that is really going from uh, when does the vessel arrive when is the cargo opening time when does the when is the container itself discharged um when is the vessel leaving again uh it's it's a broad range of, of timestamps uh, yeah. that, that are shared. Right. Yeah, it makes sense because otherwise you cannot guarantee that fluidity that you're you're exactly. aiming for and that that, that subtle uh, operation. So all the partners that you work, the sh shippers in southern Germany, or they, they can all use the port base information or maybe via partners like you mentioned. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, can you provide an example of, of the information that you enable to be shared among your uh, supply chain partners? Yeah, I think Mara already gave some uh, very interesting examples from a shipping and terminal perspective. What we add to it is uh, custom status information. So is a container uh, scheduled to be uh, checked physically or digitally? Uh, and is it released already? So you can actually pick it up. Uh, but also um, uh, bill of lading information, cargo information, how the shipping line declared it at the customs. That information is available for the ones who do the next declaration to the customs. So mm -hmm. they reuse the information that's already there. Yeah. Um, in the introduction, you said how uh, passionate both of you are in continuously evolving and, and growing and changing. What's what's next for Port Base? So I think uh, if we look at, uh, well, the next uh, topic is that we enable the optimization. So we don't build the optimization of the processes ourselves, but we see a lot of very interesting initiatives. Like in Rotterdam, we have NextLogic that optimizes the, uh, well, the planning of the barges in the port. They are connected with one connection to port base, so they can have access to all the data, but also to the companies that can make use of their solution. So this is the time where we actually connect with other types of optimizers and we uh, enable them to well uh, do their business in Rotterdam efficiently, but also for data owners that currently share data with Portbase to share their data with all other kinds of uh, uh, companies that they are interested to share it with. So I think that's the next level what we are doing now, connecting the, the complete ecosystem uh, within a port yeah. to the data. What What are your ambitions or APM's ambitions in the port of Rotterdam? Um, well, we last year we um, we got the approval to expand our terminal. So uh, the coming years we will be doubling in size. Wow. Um, that means double, uh, yeah, really doubling the capacity of the terminal. Um, and uh, yeah, that's that's quite a, a challenge. Right, growth typically <laughs> comes with challenges. How do you enable <laughs> exactly. that it doesn't get congested? Or yeah, exactly. So um, uh, also also in this respect, there is a lot of attention for the systems, for the whole flow, uh, digital flow, also behind it to ensure that once that part doubles as well, we are ready to uh, to accommodate it without congestion uh, like we have right now. Okay, yeah. well, good luck with that. Um, finally, maybe, um, what would your advice be to, to shippers or freight forwarders that are looking, that, that understand that we need to share data, we need to really use this data to our advantage? If you're not really doing that yet, how can you... Uh, what would your advice be to get started? Um, I would say uh, st start using it, adapt your processes uh, with uh, all the data that is available and ensure that you do that in a sustainable way. How uh, do you do that in a sustainable way? 
Like, uh, so within, uh, within within our company, we have a standard uh, way of working uh, that comes also with uh, uh, Lean, for example, where you have a standard process of improving uh, improving certain processes. That means uh, we get together uh, in a room for a week and we look how are the processes mapped right now, what kind of information could we, for example, from a party like Portbase, get to improve uh, improve that certain process draft a new process and then start doing it mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. so you do you, you start with the data but then you gather it and you you talk about it in a room at a table with people it's not you're not relying on the systems to improve your flow for you definitely not and and you also don't do it alone so um, for example last week we had uh, a project like this to improve the uh, the idle time after operation so the time when the operation is finished but then the vessel is alongside the key we would like it to leave as soon as possible mm -hmm. uh, so in this process we uh, we were together uh, with the port of Rotterdam with the pilots with the, the tug companies uh, with um, uh, the the linesman all together to see how can we improve this but that really requires all parties to be there to be involved and to commit can you say anything about the conclusions how how do you do that um, so the conclusion uh, last week was <laughs> that there is quite a lot to do there is a, a big action plan but then we can achieve an improvement of 22 percent Wow. Okay. Well, that that'll be uh, of that will come in handy when you ex expand in size. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, double in size, uh -huh. I should say. Okay. Well, I mean, that's huge that you can still draw twenty two percent improvement out of really like taking the opportunity to reassess, like how is this flow actually operating, and what can we improve on? That's huge. Um, and what would your advice be if you're not already a member of Port Base? Become a member, obviously, course, and yeah. then you'll help <laughs> yeah, them figure that's it out. Obvious <laughs> step, yeah, <laughs> sure. No, but I really um, uh, uh, have the same line as uh, Mara. I think it's so important, also, not only to discuss rates together, so what it is cost, but how can we optimize the collaboration and what kind of data do you need? Mm. So on the negotiation table, don't only talk about the cost, but also talk about the data and the, the collaboration perspective. Uh, because it's uh, it's uh, many times it's forgotten, and then in a the later stage it's going to be a topic. Mm -hmm. But it it should be really part of the of the talks with your suppliers and customers. How do you jointly uh, improve your um, your performance? Yeah, from the start. From the yeah. start, uh, I think that's a very important mm -hmm. one. And the other one is uh, our uh, experience. Also, you have to take this step by step based on concrete use cases like the one Mara has. Really make it tangible what the value is that you are creating by sharing this data and optimizing the process. Exactly, because then in the in in maybe in the second instance, you will discover that you're actually cutting costs. Maybe that was not so obvious exactly. at the beginning, but. In the end, that's actually what happens. Yeah. Definitely. And yeah. it's a big elephant. You have to cut it yeah. in pieces. Oh, so okay. start small. Yeah, start yeah. With, the, uh, with the trunk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Start small and then, then it's also that makes it a bit easier to, uh, to make some progress. Yeah, celebrate exactly. that progress and yeah. then continue and then build uh, on the that rest of the elephant yes exactly okay yeah. well this has been very helpful very hands-on and and tangible for for people that are maybe starting to explore this topic uh, or, or at a different uh, different level um good luck with the expansion <laughs> next year for APM. thank you for joining us and, and good luck uh, sharing your wisdom and advice with uh with all the other uh, nice. parties thank you so much donald and mara for being here with us today so digitizing really proves to be very important if you want to reduce your footprint and waste obviously uh, and um it'll be really good to to really take in these practical examples and see how port base becomes uh, available for the whole hinterland of the port area so that parties can connect and uh, improve in efficiency in the next uh, episode of Supply Chain Talks, I will be joined by Hapek Lloyd and Port of Rotterdam Authority. I think the major challenge that maritime faces, different from other maybe transport sectors, is that there is no single solution. So we cannot say it will be 
uh, for example, let's say methanol, there will be a range of, of fuels. And as a port, we're preparing for all these different fuels. Do you want to know more? Visit portofrotterdam.com slash container shipping. Thank you so much for tuning in and please join us again next time.